Hello and welcome back to another video. Unfortunately, there is no drop video this week. Um, unfortunately, we just couldn't get everything together in time, but it means we are going to be ahead uh, going forward, so it's all going to be good. Um, but I thought we'd do a very informal update video. I saw a video from Ali Abdul, I believe I'm pronouncing his name probably completely wrong, um, but really cool video from him where he literally just sat down for 40 minutes. I don't know how long this is going to be. Sorry to Danny over there. Um, we will see. But... He just sat down, spoke about the business, spoke about the changes, and just gave a general update and an office tour. Now, our office is 250 square feet with a back office, uh, which we won't be showing, but we'll give you some B-roll of the rest of the office, show you around. There's still quite a bit to be done, and if you are in the Clerkenwell area, you are more than welcome to come by. Have a look at the office, come have a look at some watches, have a coffee, have some tea, we've got beers in the fridge, it's pretty incredible. Um, but I thought we'd just discuss a few things. I will have my phone, I'll be checking it every now and again, uh, mainly for the notes I've made, which are very brief. But this is a new chapter of Kibble Watches. As you saw, we have put the Moses on the website. So there's that aspect with, you know, 40,000 pound watch. It's something we're testing out. Now, obviously selling a watch like that is very different to selling what we would usually sell, you know, vintage Amigas, modern Amigas, Rolex, everything in between with Seiko and so on. This is a whole new sort of industry almost. And in terms of finding a customer for something like that, it is a very different process than it is with the stuff we've usually sold. So it means we are testing a lot of things. Now, if we had a 40,000 pound Rolex Daytona, for example, that would probably be a hell of a lot easier. But I think this push on independent and also micro brands and the more unusual is exactly what we're known for. So these Moses made complete sense. So we'll see how we get on with them. Now that does open up another realm as you'll see on the website if you keep an eye on that sort of thing is uh, under watches and all watches there's also a £10,000 plus. We are doing our best to provide more watches within that realm. It's a, a new area which we're opening up to, and I think there's a lot of potential there. Now, that isn't to say we're going to ever stop the sub £1,000 watches or £500 watches. We are going to continue doing that because at the end of the day, it's what Kibble Watches was built on. Uh, it's what I enjoy. It's also what we're really good at. You know, We're very good at finding sub £1,000 watches that are super interesting and a little bit more unusual. And I think that's part of the fun. So we're definitely going to continue. Add this in. Look, this is this is the setup we've got going on over here. There's Danny behind the camera. Camera. Hello, Danny. We'll hello, talk about hello. him in a second. Hello. So this new chapter, as much as it is about the watches and the stock, it goes much further than that. We have many plans. We have many things we're aiming to do. And we're going to touch on that a little bit more. But before we get into that, you'd have probably just seen the video I just did of Danny behind the camera. So for those of you who don't know who Danny is, we're on a budget on Instagram. We've known each other for a long time and we are taking him basically basically three days a week going forward, um, mainly for photography and videography and all that kind of fancy words, as we said in a previous video. Um, and the reason for that is I want to put more emphasis on this aspect, on the YouTube. I think for many years, I've done it on and off and very much neglected, neglected it uh, as, a, as a vital part of the business. So now we have this opportunity to do a lot more with it. I think that's where the, a lot of the growth is going to come from. Now, I do not plan to do any sort of day in the life videos like um, you see from all of the, the watch dealers at the moment, like Roman Scharf and um, all, all those guys, you know who I'm talking about. They, they're doing a fantastic job and it's super entertaining. I just don't think it's the right fit for us. Um, and also, if I'm completely honest, I don't think our kind of clientele would want to be on camera most of the time and be recorded in that way that they're recorded in that series. I just don't think it would work. So for that reason, we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is much more content in terms of reviews. We're going to bring back Q&As. We're going to hopefully bring some sort of collector's series, very similar to obviously what you see over at Hadinki with Talking Watches. However, the focus will be much more on real people. And I say it with all due respect to the people that have they've filmed on those series, um, but I think we'll have a lot more Seikos, a lot more Oris, and a lot more affordable watches, which I think all you guys and girls can relate to. And ideally, very relatable stories as well. You know, people who didn't, uh, for the most part, first watch was a, a Rolex Daytona. You know, it's going to be much more real than that, in my opinion. Um, and I think that's where the interest is going to come in for that series. So, on that note, if any of you out there have a really cool collection, really cool stories, and won't mind being on camera, send us an email at info at Kibble Watches. We'll be happy to, to get in contact and see what we can do. So this is all to put us in the direction of where I see Kibble Watches going. We are always going to be a pre-owned watch reseller, basically. That's, that's not going to change. But we are going to put more emphasis on, on the YouTube channel. 
We're also gonna put more emphasis on um, our authorized stockist area. So as a lot of you have seen, we are an authorized stockist for Fears Watches, which has been incredible. Um, we'll probably put some B-roll of those up or uh, photos, whatever it may be. Um, I've been very good friends with Nicholas of Fears Watches for a long time, and it's great to see that brand grow, and we're growing with it. Um, but I do wanna add more British brands. So I am in talks with a few companies that a lot of you will be aware of. I'm not gonna mention any names just yet. Um, and there is potential there. Now, all these kind of things take a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of sort of preparation behind the scenes for these things to ever become a reality. So a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about in this video, do not expect in a few weeks that it's all live and all of a sudden we've got all these British brands and it's this huge thing. It's gonna take a while, probably way into next year. Now, luckily, with where the business is at, I'm thinking very much in the five to 10 year terms plus rather than the next five months. And I think that's where things get very interesting because as me and Danny spoke yesterday, there, there's so much potential with all this in the YouTube alone um, to grow the business and also grow a new aspect of the business rather than just constantly look at the watches we've got for sale. This is what we're selling. This is what we're selling. There's this opportunity to really go deeper than that because at the end of the day, we are collectors, both me and Danny and everyone else we're ever gonna have at this company are gonna be collectors first and foremost, people who love watches. And I think there's a very interesting sort of balance that, be, that can be had there between the, the collecting side, but also the retailer side, the side of selling. And it's a case of doing that carefully because I feel like we've all seen a lot of companies out there, uh, one beginning with H to, to name a single one, um, that has grown very big and gone completely over to commercial. Um, I think we could all agree with that. They've lost a lot of the core aspects which we all fell in love with. Now, luckily, this Kibble Watches has always been a seller. So we need to figure out how to balance that transition to also do very fair, honest content whilst not sort of blurring the lines, basically. And I wanna be completely transparent about that and we are trying to figure it out. And it's gonna be a process. There's probably gonna be some videos which maybe don't seem as as personal as they could do. And I wanna to point to the Moser videos being one of them. The Moser videos are fantastic. But I didn't go in as much detail as a personal reviewer as I would want to. The reason being, we are selling that watch. I didn't wanna blur the lines. I didn't wanna confuse people. And I didn't want people to think I'm just talking highly about this watch because we're selling it. Because I had nothing but great things to say about both of them. So that's where I've got a figure sync out. And I think your guys and girls comments in the description on this could be quite interesting. See what you think and how we, we balance that. But this again, to bring Danny back into it, this is where he's gonna be mainly focused. The photography on the website and also production of these videos in terms of the videoing themselves, but also the content involved. For the most part, I'm still gonna come up with a lot of content uh, that we do, but he's gonna take a much lead, more leading role in terms of thinking the next videos, what's it gonna be? What are the new series we should try? Should we try this? And the actual filming itself, which is crucial to it. Eventually also the editing. Um, so this is where it frees up a lot of my time. And that is kind of the goal where we're at with all of this in some weird way is freeing up more and more of my time. So Danny with the photography, videography. My dad who actually does a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see, but in terms of the write-ups on the website, uh, apart from the personal note, he does all of that. It's again freeing up my time to give me more time to focus on one, what I'm good at, and also what I really enjoy is this business, which is finding new stock for you guys and girls and selling that stock, you know, sitting here with the meetings and doing all that kind of stuff. And also being in front of the camera, I do enjoy this part as well. So if we can emphasize all those things and focus on those things and get people who are really good at the other things, that's only gonna help the business grow. So that, that's where there's a lot of potential in what we're trying to figure out and work. So just like magic, we've moved from one place to another. Um, so we're at my very messy desk, which almost always stays messy and it always will be like that. But um, the next point I wanna talk about, and this is so off the cuff, like I will show you my notes. There's like six notes and that's it. Um, I wanted it just to be very organic, very natural. So the next point I wanna talk about is sales goals. So for those of you who follow on Instagram and follow my personal account especially, you will know we were aiming for half a million in sales this year. That is an increase of, of quite a considerable amount. Last year we did around 250,000, so a quarter of a million. This new office, the costs are increasing. Obviously we're taking Danny three days a week and he costs a fortune, he's so expensive. Uh, and then we're also, just in general, general costs have increased of the business, which was expected with this move and with the growth of what we're trying to do. So 
the the goal of half a million this year was based on all of that but also hoping we'd do more and to be honest we are on track to absolutely smash that goal i think we're very close to actually hitting it already and we still have well i think we already have hit it i need to go look at the latest figures but i think realistically we're on track to do 600 to 650 thousand this year in sales which is brilliant the goal for 2022 was a million in sales i'm increasing that to 1.5 million um, the reason being with all of this expansion, everything we're hoping to do, I see no reason why that isn't doable. And also considering the growth on last year, which was during a pandemic and working from home for most people. And in this trade, I've, I'll be very honest, at first it was terrifying and sales were down, but it's actually, it's helped this trade a lot because people have been at home bored and they've just been buying new watches. So a lot of that growth has come at the uh, sort of, it sounds awful because this is a horrible situation that happened, but we've grown a lot because of the pandemic. Um, whether that growth stays there or not is something that we're going to have to wait and see. And I think a lot of people in this trade are thinking the same thing. Is this crazy high going to continue? I don't see prices dropping as such, but I, I do see sales potentially slowing down. So that's going to be an interesting thing. We're going to see how it goes in the new year. Um, but in, up until the new year, I think sales are just going to keep exploding as they are. So we'll see where all that goes. But yeah, 1.5 million next year. And once we get to that kind of realm, again, as I said earlier, I'm thinking in five to 10 year intervals rather than five to six months, but there still has to be those shorter goal um, sort of outline to know what you're aiming for each year rather than just saying, well, in 10 years, we'll be over here, so it's fine. Like you still need that structure. So that would put us in a very interesting position where that kind of sales, and again, Profit is nowhere near that. <laughs> and this trade, I've been very honest, is about eight to 12% profit. Then you've got to take off obviously all your costs, your VAT, everything like that. So really this trade is, is absolutely terrible for making money in the, in the sort of basics of it. But if you love it, there's, there's so much more to it than that, than just making money. But obviously as a business, we have to think about making money as well. So 1.5 million in sales would put us in an interesting position where this YouTube channel can grow and we can potentially have another member of staff full-time, including Danny full-time at that point. That's where it gets interesting because the size of this office is probably maxed out with free workers and then having customers which puts us in a position where the following year we could very well be looking for new office space already, which is crazy to think. But I think that's where it gets very interesting. So we're going to see how all that goes. I'm not really going to talk much more about all the sell figures and everything like that, because I think just the blanket statements of 650,000, 1.5 million give you enough context. Um, and as I said, eight to 12%, you can do the math yourself and see where we're landing. You can take off all the costs if you want to really nail it down and figure out what we're earning as a business. Good point, what am I wearing? So, I am wearing a watch that just arrived, what would it have been, an hour ago? Maybe an hour ago? Um, it's a Gakota. So, I've been a big fan of what Gakota have been doing for a while, I'll put some on. There, we'll have some B-roll probably after, but this is a jump hour. I love jump hours, I've owned multiple vintage ones in the past. This is one that they've discontinued, but they were very, very kind and actually had a little dig through and found one for me, uh, the model I wanted. And yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, the only thing is it's the Chinese movement, same as the Baltic. Um, the new Baltic that came out, we'll put a photo of that on screen, which unfortunately I had to go back to Baltic. It stopped two hours after I had it. So not the greatest experience with the Chinese movement on that so far. So I'm hoping for better with this, um, but instantly straight off the bat, beautiful design, like incredible design. I absolutely love it. The rotor is ridiculously loud. I'm sorry if you've been hearing it during the video, um, but yeah, really, really good looking watch. So yes, thank you, Danny, for reminding me. That's what's on wrist. Okay, so the last part of this video, I wanna to touch on some things we're doing in the short term. So all that talk was more long-term. It was more the future of the business, where we're going, what we're aiming for. Let's talk more real in terms of what you can expect to hopefully in the next few months uh, from us. So. The first thing we've been working on a lot, obviously this YouTube channel we spoke about earlier, but then also the brand directory. I put a little sneak peek on Instagram yesterday. A lot of people were like, what is this? Um, they were very confused. Some people thought it was something completely different. But basically what we're working on, and I'm gonna say it out loud here because we've already built it. So if someone wants to go nick it, go for it. We're gonna beat you to it, so it's all good. Um, we are basically building a an area on the website called a brand directory where A to Z, we're gonna have all the brands listed. Now. When I say all the brands listed, so far is all the brands we have ever stocked, which I believe is in the realm of over 150 to 200, somewhere thereabouts. Obviously there are thousands of watch brands. This is going to be a forever project of Kibble watches. When you go on here, you will find 
the brands as I said, and let's say you wanna know about Amiga, you go find Amiga on there. Rather than you having to go to Wikipedia, go to Amiga's own website, read about 12 articles to get the main information you need on what Amiga, who Amiga are, what their history is, and what are the important things you should know, such as the moon landing and all that kind of stuff, right? Not that anyone doesn't know about that already. But this website, that well, our website and this brand directory will have the core information you need in a very sort of manageable, readable amount that you could do while you're on the toilet. Like it's really, really gonna be that good. So I would say a thousand words plus some brands, obviously like Amiga, there's more history, so there'll be more. A brand like Baylor, which most people have never heard of, right? There will be a lot less because there's just less information out there. But the whole point of this was to make your life easier. Let's say you're at a watch meetup and someone shows you a watch you've never heard of and you're fascinated by it and they go away and you can't find them again. And you wanna know what, like a bit more about that brand. Who are they? Are they connected to Longines? Like what, what's the connection? You can go to our website and find out everything you need to know about that brand very quickly whilst going to the bar, coming back again, right? Nice and simple. So that's the goal of it and accumulated information, a hub of information on each brand. There is also a section where you can request a brand. So if the brand isn't on there, because obviously we can't have every brand in the world, we are physically doing this ourselves. I wanna say a big shout out to my dad who is at the forefront of this. This is his baby, he is growing it and it's uh, great to see. You can request a brand and then we will have it sort of on there within a week or two uh, with as much information as we can find. If you go on there and you notice some information is either incorrect or you think there's more information that could be added, again, you can email us and let us know. And all this will pull over back to the website. So obviously it's on our website, kibblewatches.co.uk, but at the bottom you'll be able to see watches from that brand that are for sale or we have sold. And the important thing there is a reference point. So let's say you're looking at Vintage Accurist. We will have a selection of Vintage Accurist we have sold and you'll be able to scroll through and see what they look like. Again, just for context. This is something that I had the idea of a couple of months ago now, six months ago, but I've been sort of just figuring out what it even would be, what would, what would it look like and why. Now, this is something that was really gonna benefit collectors, for one, but also in terms of the business, because we're being honest here, let's talk about that. This is something that I think is gonna translate SEO um, very, very well. People are gonna be coming to this website to find it. Just the way people go to Bob's Watches to search the Rolex serial number, or they go to the Watch Sleuth, I think you pronounce it, for the Seiko serial numbers, or you know all these places on the internet where you go for this hub of information, I think this area of Kibble Watches could become that for this, basically. Um, I've already spoken to some people about it, they think it's a good idea. Some dealers have already said they're gonna use it as a reference point for like uh, when they get a brand in and they don't know about it, they're gonna come to the website to find it. That's what's really interesting about this. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully in the next month or two, it will be fully up and running and pretty much usable. So we'll see what that looks like and see how people like it. But that's a very long-term thing. It's gonna be done short-term, but it's gonna benefit long-term. Obviously we touched briefly on authorized stockists. We're gonna put more emphasis on that. We are working with some brands as we speak and we're gonna see what we can do. The core of this and this, the thing I wanna make crystal clear is we are only ever gonna stock brands we believe in and or have sold previously as well to prove that. Um, we are never gonna stock a brand just because it's an easy fit. We have been approached by brands in the past and some pretty reasonably big brands that would have benefited us financially quite well. And we've said no. I want brands that I believe in and that I think are really doing something different and very great. And also I really wanna emphasize on English brands uh, for now. I'm not gonna say forever, but definitely for now, because I think they're doing one, something very interesting. And also our location being in Clerkenwell, I think everything just fits together. It's like a perfect jigsaw piece that people look at and they go, that makes sense. Whereas if we just started stocking, I don't know, Victor, people would be like, what on earth are you doing, right? It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Whereas English brands make sense for the company. So I'm excited to see what we can do. And hopefully again, in sort of six to 12 months, you'll see much more of that. The final point on stocking is we are adding straps to the website. Now, don't worry, we have not gone out and bought loads of like cheap straps and just put our name on it and then called it a day. We are working with people who already make fantastic straps. So Fizz watches are gonna be on there in terms of their straps because they are incredible. The goat's leather and the Bristol leather, really great range, high quality, um, and very good prices in our opinion. We're not gonna have an affordable range anytime soon. By affordable, I mean sub 50, 60, 70 pounds, which I know for some people out there are thinking, who 
spends over 50 pounds on a strap anyway, right? Um, but we're talking more premium level straps. So the Fears Watches uh, straps. And then there's another company, I'm gonna say it because either way I really like what they're doing. And even if we can't make it all work logistically for each other, I wanna support what he's doing anyway. And I have done many times, the Strap Tailor. So uh, I don't know if you've been to their website, You're high, I highly recommend you should. Um, what he is doing is amazing. The quality is incredible. I own probably 10 of his straps already myself that I paid full price for. Uh, or occasionally got a little cheeky discount here and there. Um, so I really do believe in what he's doing and the strap quality. We are hopefully going to be doing something with him, whether it be uh, we turn into a stockist, a London stockist that also sells his straps online, um, and maybe an exclusive range or just an exclusive range. We're going to figure out what we can do. We're recording this on Wednesday. I'm meeting with him Friday. This is going out on Saturday. So all of it's already happened um, and we will see where we go from there. Again, this isn't something that's going to be done in the next couple of weeks. This is probably going to take months, but it's exciting nonetheless. There's a couple of other watch strap brands I'm considering as well. A couple of emails have gone out, but we'll see. I think for now, those two would just be fantastic. It'd be a great place to start. And also logistically, so we can see what it's like, <laughs> you know, packaging straps and see how sales go. And also physically in uh, the office as well, you know, are they are people adding them onto their watches? And that's where I want to ask you guys and girls, what would what's your opinion on this? And if you're buying, let's say, a five thousand pound watch, would you consider also looking at and adding on the day a hundred a hundred and fifty pound strap to your watch? I think people would. I've been asked for it multiple times, but I'd like to know your opinion. So. I think that's pretty much it. I don't know how long this video has been. Um, we've gone over a fair bit. I'm sure I've missed loads, so we may do more of these in the future. Um, but let me know what you thought of this kind of video, just straight off the cuff, very organic, very just however it comes out, right? I'm sure when I'm editing this, I'm gonna cringe my life away, but it's all good. So we will see you all in the next video. Thank you for checking in. And again, sorry for no drop. Go check out the rest of the load of watches we have on the website. I'm sure there's something there for you. And uh, we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.